So you might've seen my recent post on these eight different types of progress charts. On that post, I asked which one was your favorite. And to my surprise, the gauge chart actually got a lot of votes. So in this video, I'm gonna explain what the gauge chart is, when to use it, and how to build it. All right, so here's our gauge chart. And before we begin, I should mention that I'll make this file available for free download, and I'll put a link in the description below where you can grab it and follow along. So the gauge chart, the first thing we wanna know is what is this chart? And essentially it's just a chart that displays progress from zero to 100%. There's a lot of different ways, of course, with charts to display progress. If we jump back to the dashboard here, we can do that with the donut, bar chart, this dot chart, waffle chart, and so on. So that's why I was a bit surprised that the gauge got so many votes, but I think that makes sense for a few reasons. One, it's just something we've all seen and are familiar with in cars uh, and things like that. And two, it's circular and our eyes are drawn to circles. So if you have a dashboard that just has a lot of bar charts and lines and kind of rectangular shapes on it, the gauge can be a great one to add in there to kind of break up some of those straight edges. Our eyes will naturally just be drawn to that. All right, so let's build out this gauge chart. Now, before I begin, I wanna mention that there is an easier way to do this. Uh, and I call it the boring gauge. I have it on this sheet here. And essentially it's the same thing. It's really just a donut chart kind of cut in half here where we have the progress here. And then the gray zone over here is the uh, percentage incomplete. But with the gauge, the one I created here, the only difference is that each percentage point, each one percentage point has kind of an increment here. So you can see it has these white bands around it. So it really kind of gives it more of a, a gauge type look. And if you don't like this, then you can use the boring gauge or you can use this one, uh, totally up to you. But we're gonna build out this one here. So we're gonna go over to the gauge follow along sheet and we'll go ahead and build this out. Now, before we create the chart, I'll quickly explain the source data and the setup for that. Essentially what we have here is a sequence of numbers from one to 100. If we scroll all the way down here to the bottom, you can see this goes all the way to 100. And then down at the very bottom, we have kind of the second half of the donut, because we are using a donut here. And that's gonna be 100 for the uh, gray zone. And then in this case here, for the amount left over for the percentage incomplete will be the percentage complete, um, 200 minus that essentially is what's happening there. And so the color uh, column here is just calculated with a simple if formula. So it's just saying, that if the percentage complete, if this number here is less than or equal to the percentage complete, return a one, otherwise return a zero. So that's the setup for the data. Now, the first thing we're gonna do is just select the gray column. So I'll, I'll select the cell, hit control shift down arrow to select the entire column, in, including this 100 at the bottom. We'll scroll up to the top here. We're gonna go to the insert tab and we're going to, under the pie chart dropdown, we're gonna choose donut chart. And so that'll bring in this donut chart here. Now you can see we have some formatting to do, obviously, because it doesn't look great yet. The first thing I'm going to do is just kind of resize it and then I'll remove the legend. We definitely don't need that. And now you can see it's starting to kind of look like the chart that we created. There's a few things we have to do here. So the first thing we're going to do, actually I'm gonna remove the chart title as well. That'll just make this bigger, a little easier to see. So the first thing we're going to do is do some formatting here. And there's a few ways you can do this. You can just kind of select the chart here to select all of the series right here, all the series here. You can also do this on the format tab, just go up here and choose series uh, gray. And from that, we're going to go over to the format tab. Again, shape fill, we can just choose a light gray color. And then we also want to do an outline here. And the outline we're going to do uh, white, just like that. So now if we click off this, you can kind of see we have this gray bar with a white line around it. Now the other thing you'll notice is the orientation here. Obviously it's kind of on its side and we need to move it. So the other thing we can do for that is we can uh, go up here again, series gray, format selection. We're gonna go over here and you can see under these options, we have the angle of the first slice and we wanna change this to 270 to kind of rotate it backwards there or rotate it all the way around. We'll change it to 270 and now this is looking better. And so finally what we need to do is just kind of get rid of this bottom gray part. We're gonna do that by clicking on that series or that portion just one time. So you can see here that it's selected. Again, if that's hard to see, and once you click on it up here in the format tab, it'll say series gray point 101. It's the one after 100. That just makes sure you have that one selected. And then again, for this shape fill, we're just gonna choose no fill. So now we have the background here of the gauge chart. All right, so next we're gonna work on the color component or the progress component of the chart. 
And for this, we're going to make a duplicate of this chart. We're actually gonna overlay two charts here, which I usually don't like to do, but I'm gonna show you a technique for grouping them together so they won't uh, come unaligned at some point. Uh, okay, so first we're just gonna select this chart. I'm gonna hit Control D on the keyboard to make a duplicate of that chart. You can also uh, copy paste here. And then we just wanna line it up perfectly to the existing chart. And you can use the arrow keys for that as well, or you can use the uh, alignment options on the format tab to just make sure you get that lined up perfectly there uh, with the existing chart in the background. Now what we're gonna do is select this chart and all we need to do is move this over. So grab the border here with the crosshairs, left click and hold and move it over so the source data is now the color column. And you can kind of start to see this come to life here. However, uh, Excel's repainted the chart again so we need to do some formatting here. So the first thing we're gonna do is just click anywhere on any of these series here. That's gonna select all the series in the chart. We'll go to the format tab. For shape fill, we can just change this to green or again, whatever color you wanna use here is totally fine. For the shape outline, we also want to change that to white. So we can do that there. And then we're going to click the uh, series here, essentially this large piece that's the incomplete uh, along with the other 50% at the bottom or the 100 points at the bottom. Uh, we'll just select that and you can again see that it's series color 0.101 and we're gonna change that shape fill to no fill. So we'll change that to no fill. Now you won't see the uh, bars, the gray bars in the background yet and that's because we also need to do, apply some transparency to this chart itself. And we can do that by going here and clicking chart area. And then for shape fill, again, we're gonna choose no fill and you'll start to see it come through. If you don't see it come through, your plot area might also have some fill applied. Typically it doesn't by default, but you might also need to uh, make that transparent as well. And now you'll see the other chart in the background. So we have the incomplete portion here and then the green part is the complete portion. And then finally, we just need to add the label. So the source data here doesn't really have a label for 47% that we can pull from. So we're going to use a text box for this. We're gonna to go to the insert tab here. Under shapes, we're going to uh, select the text box and then we'll just draw this right here on the chart. And we're gonna select just the border of the text box, go right up here to the formula bar, type it equals, and then select the cell that contains the percentage complete hit enter there, and that's going to display that or kind of link the text here to this cell. So as this changes, let's say this changes to 52%, you can see that of course the chart changes because all of our formulas are driving off of this, and this text box changes as well. Now we also need to style this. I mean, you, you don't have to, but I'm gonna style this. I'm just gonna bump up the uh, text size here. We'll center that up. And so now we have our label right here. We can just kind of put it at the bottom of the gauge and when again whenever this percentage changes so let's say it's now 65 percent that's the gauge will change along with the text box and then finally we just want to group these together so i'm just going to select one of the charts here the top chart on the format tab here we can choose selection pane this is a great one to know if you're working with shapes or charts i also like to right click add to quick access toolbar so i have it right up here and this turns my selection pane on so I can see a list of all the shapes on the sheet. I'm gonna hold control to select both of these. And then I'm just gonna go over here, I'm gonna right click group and hit group. And then that will group these together. So now if I move these around, they're both gonna move around all at the same time. Now you do have to be careful when selecting them. You can still select individual elements within that. But as long as you select the group on the outside, you can easily move them around. And then one other note here is that you will have this kind of blank area at the bottom. And there's currently a border around the chart. You can select the chart and you'd select both of those charts and then just change the outline to no outline. And we do that for this chart as well, no outline. And then when you click off of that, as long as your background is white, you won't see all of that uh, blank space at the bottom and then you can move other elements uh, above that so you, it doesn't interfere with any other elements on your dashboard or your report. And during the initial setup, I forgot to explain how to increase the size of the bar. So we'll go ahead and do that now. So we'll just select the top chart here, select into that. On the format tab, we'll go up here and then we'll choose series color and hit format selection. 
And over here on the right side, that'll bring up these formatting options again. And we want to decrease the donut hole size, essentially that circle in the middle. So instead of 75%, I'll take it down to 60%, hit enter. And you can see now that the green bar here has increased. And we need to do that same setting for the gray bar in the background. So in order to do that, I'm gonna go back over to the selection pane and I'm gonna choose the chart or select the chart below that that contains the gray series. Again, we can go up here to the format tab, series gray, format selection. And then here we'll just change the donut hole size to the same number, 60% hit enter. And then that will change both of those. Now, if you do this step at the beginning before you duplicate the charts, you won't have to do it here, but this just does give you a good idea of how to now work with both charts since we have two sitting on top of each other. So that's an overview of how to create this gauge chart in Excel. I will be creating other tutorials for all other seven types of progress charts. So make sure you subscribe to our channel and get notified when we publish those new videos. Thanks again for watching. Have a great day and I'll see you in the next video.